Ken Vinnie Percy, welcome to the studio. Good morning to you. Morning, how are you doing? Did you ever have a player on the pitch give it the big one and uh, mm, sort don't. of try to force your hand about having to make a substitution or a decision? Or No, I don't think so. Not that I remember or experienced it. You know, players every so often lose the head or say something, but I think, yeah, and I don't remember anything as definite as, as what we've seen do today. How would you um, deal with it? Like, because Vera Powell, this is not an easy situation to be in. No, I think I think to be fair and, and where I wasn't helpful is I, um, look um, I don't want to slag off a full nation but Dutch people can be very blunt and they, they have a way of saying stuff I was trying to explain this to someone the other day I worked, I worked not that long ago for a company that was half owned by a Dutch company and when they leave the room they don't say can you turn off the light like an Irish person or they sort of it's, I, I put it down to the way they've learned English they say turn off the light you know it's very blunt and it's so I think it's how they've learned the language to be fair so um Maybe maybe you get the impression that Vera Pro isn't Vera Pro isn't a real warm coach. You get that impression. So that doesn't suit every player. But I think and I, I don't like this saying football people, but I think a lot of football people seen through what happened the other day as not good enough, not acceptable and not something that you'd like to be part of as a as a coach or even as a teammate. So I didn't think it, it looked good at all and for for Katie McKay, but thought it was really poor and um totally I wouldn't agree. like to be I wouldn't like to be in that situation. I think I think for someone who is who is a superstar and whatever, I think she let herself down to in that in that instance, and I think look, she's got credit in the bank. She's been brilliant for Ireland, but I don't think that was good. Do you ever have a player come to you in any of your guys's like during the week to say, "Here, listen, what was going on there was not right. We should do it differently." Yeah, but that, that's, that's okay. Grand, like. Yeah, people question you, and like no one has the right answers, and and sometimes you know you might end up you know in a heat discussion with a player but I think all the good coaches reflect as well and they mightn't they mightn't say to the player oh you were right what you said but you reflect you'll have a discussion with your staff and you know that's that's fine same in sport the same in business you don't always um, you don't always agree to everything but at the same time nothing wrong with different opinions nothing wrong. like mm-hmm. players as well see stuff and they hear stuff and um, but ultimately only one person or the staff are making the decision and they're the ones that are judged by it and I think I think going into the tournament uh, it's funny how my brain works going into the tournament I probably wasn't a big uh, Vera Pau fan um, because of the style of play to be honest with you it doesn't excite me too much but I've probably come away from it being a bit more of a fan because it's a bit like it's a bit like the Joe Smith era like you know, all people have done for the last couple of years is sort of not all they've done, but there's been a little bit of criticism of Joe Smith. Revisionism. Yeah, what a legend that man was, and what he done for Irish rugby should never be forgot. But it's very easy now to kick people as they walk out the door, and I like, get in that sense with with Vera Pell, and I just don't like it. And I think it's okay, probably part of modern society, but that team getting there. I mean, she she spearheaded that group, and I think that should not be forgotten. Like you know, mm. let's see how the next few weeks play out. Um, Derry City through to the latest round. We start there. There's a few games to touch on. Uh, latest round of the Europa Conference qualification: three three in Finland last night. So they go through five four in aggregate, and uh, a major break in the next round with Tobol of Kazakhstan and the third qualifying round next week. Um, serious battle here. Had to come from behind twice. Yeah, I think I think what uh, I was chatting briefly to Rory last night um, he was literally sitting on the plane waiting to take off so it was nothing more than a brief chat just delighted for him personally I think it's been a really difficult time uh, for him personally I mean his family have gone through so much and uh, he's, he's he's had to deal with that and you still have to manage a team in the spotlight and while we, we sit here and we, we talk about teams and they should be close to the Rovers all that stuff you have to forget there's a human side or you do forget there's a human side to these people so that would have been um, it's very hard to explain what the feeling of winning in Europe is. It's just different. Um, it is your players. Your players obviously love it and all of that stuff. But you're you're operating at a, such a high level. The teams these these people are playing against. Um, and that sense for Rory last night would have been huge for him. But you've got to say he's had huge experience in around it. Done the dark set up mm. in terms of uh, getting prepared for Europe. He's he's done that role for uh, Stephen 
Kenny and he, um, in terms of an opposition analyst for us and then he became an assistant manager and, and now he's managed himself so he's a huge experience but also the experience on the pitch and the bravery and I, the first text I sent him was hey they score four don't worry about it well, we score five yeah. and we've always had that type of joke going around and talking around the staff where how do you win games you've got to be brave and go for it and I think it's a lesson for some other teams you know in, in my view so uh, it doesn't surprise me you look at the winning goal came from Michael Duffy I think it was his 36 European game um, that's huge that's, mad. that's huge at that level that experience incredible do you know as well Vinny like the Derry lost Patrick McElhinney in the first half. They then lost Cameron Dumbigan. Like, possibly two of their most important three players, really, right? And I was just thinking, like, his recruitment has been really good. Like, so you could bring on O'Reilly and Diallo. And sort of, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to diss Shamrock Rovers here. But Shamrock Rovers squad hasn't been good enough at all in Europe this year. Whereas, in fairness to Derry, they've, I don't know what the the, the contrast in terms of resources and wages is, but Derry have been able to showcase. Like Kavanagh scoring the goal last night, he was another kind of a bit part player who scored the first goal, and their their peripheral players have had a massive role in this. And I, I was just, I was really, really delighted for, as you say, for Rory. But I think he's he's signed very well, even. The, the guy that got in from Scotland McMullen as well yeah. you know excellent for the first goal and he just seems to have a good eye for a player which I guess you saw when you were with him as well yeah he does he's always had that that's that's his, his sort of it's not I don't, I don't I don't like saying this is biggest strength because then you're, you're trying to undervalue say his management style all that stuff but he's got a great strength of well, having an eye for a player and um, absolutely but I, th- I think the key for me in terms of and I've sort of alluded already was look okay I know he lost Patrick and that Look at the starting lineup. It was attack minded. Mm. They didn't go out and try and hold something. Ben Doherty, a fullback, is is essentially a winger, and he's playing him a fullback. You've patching McElhenney, Duffy, and Kavanagh in your team. Like it's so attack minded, where it's going away from the sort of let's sit back and maybe There's all that no stuff. No park in the bus whatsoever at any point. And and you listen, you can get done. I mean, I remember we we were attack minded out in Larnaca and lost four 0 I think, or maybe even more. In the heat, um, yeah. We went chasing a game against Calgary, um, a game we should have won, a European game. And we got done. You end up three 0 and you look like you look like a clown. Um, uh, so it can go for you and against. That doesn't just, feel like what happened to Rovers, is it? Like no, that, no, it was different. It was different, and that's where maybe that's a lesson and. Far be it for me to preach to, to, to people like Stephen Bradley who's done an unbelievable job. Essentially, they should go on to win four leagues in a row. What an amazing achievement. But that attack-minded, that bravery, and it's like it's like I say about the train only passes, when, when it comes to, say, Europe, only passes once a season. And if you don't jump on it and you don't ride that wave, it's gone for another year and it might never come back again for players and that's what we always had had that message and I was disappointed for Dundalk on out I thought they had actually in many ways the best chance and you get that sense even the older Dundalk players that are still around that team um, they've done quite well to get to where they were but this was it was a 50-50 game I felt that You've got to seize the moment. I think that's what some people, and I think Rory's really good at that. From, from again, it's done dark experience. Some of the dark players, and I think Rovers will. That will. That should really hurt them. I think they've missed a huge opportunity there, and the the champions of Ireland should, unless it's a bit of bad luck in a playoff, should get group stages. And I've been saying for a long time we're getting closer to a second team in a group stage. And you look at Derry. They've got obviously a huge game against side from Kazakhstan, but we should be getting at least one team, particularly the champions, because your wafer have protected the champions. Mm. So winning your first round means you've a playoff or mm. group stages. It's it's that's going to hurt them, and particularly I, with the conference league as well. It's well, it's paid, isn't it for Irish well, teams to well, well, to be fair, your wafer and um, and I get a lot of criticism. They've protected the champions, so the champions route is protected, and that's where just winning the first game. And Rovers went into that seceded side, and losing that is. It's it's not good enough uh, from a European perspective. We like, have to have some, I think, as well. We have to have some re- reflection on that. Two Icelandic teams fairly comfortably beat two Irish teams in the end. And like, where are we going if Iceland, with all due respect to Iceland, but the population is still ahead of us in terms of this summer? And we need to look at facilities and that, and we need to look at our development of the game. I think anyway, like the Rovers against an Icelandic team that were third in Iceland were were, were inferior. They really were inferior over the two legs. Which isn't to say that. Icelandic domestic football is better than Irish domestic football. Well, as of this summer, it's it's um, the two teams were definitely they they got through anyway, and Breidablik were better than Shamrock Rovers. 
They actually were. Um, yeah, they were, and they were. They went out to Copenhagen, I think, this week, and they mm. were fairly well beaten as well. I think. Look, you can have. You can have bad moments I think I think Europe came at a wrong time for Rovers they've lost a form a uh, couple One of key injuries seven. yeah mm. so I don't think it's helped I've always said I'd love to see this Rovers team with a bit more pace and, and the thing about winning games in Europe at the highest level and going into group stages is you might only get one or two opportunities and sometimes it's the hardest thing for Irish clubs in Europe once you go up the next level is it's like you feel like you're in most games but it's just one little moment where you switch off for a quick second or you're a little bit tired and some player a right winger comes out of nowhere and just gets in behind you wins the game and that's where Rovers probably need a little bit more spark I would say in the forward area I've been saying that all season I don't think they're clinical enough is the word I use I don't know what that's that's the right even domestically um, they score more goals than everyone else this year but domestically they could do with adding a little bit more we flair. were having a bit of chat just as he was coming on because I think Vinny predicts Rovers to win the league by 10 points which he wouldn't be alone no there's still 4 points ahead but at the moment they're 100% they're inferior to Derry City they're probably inferior to Pats right now this Rovers form is, is, is a slump it's a real one goal in 7 but now they can concentrate wholly on the league will Jack Byrne be back soon when will Ferrugia be back um, mm. but the title race is 100% on because this Sharma Rovers team you've nothing to fear for them at the moment you really don't you touched on something just a bit earlier Vinny that I wanted to pick up on because Dan was talking about on the show yesterday morning about the how Derry from a style point of view are set up much better to progress in Europe than a Rovers let's say or most other Irish teams in terms of the formation the wide players the little bit of ambition they show uh this might be a very naive question but if that is the case and given the pots of money that are available in Europe and given some of the things that you've mentioned in terms of at times Shamrock Rovers maybe approach to Europe even when they you mentioned the train analogy even when they've had the ticket for the train at times they've sort of not shown the ambition to go and, and eke something out of it um, but if those pots of gold are available why aren't more of the top teams in the league setting up uh, in a way like Derry to progress in Europe and avail of that money yeah I, I think we've got to be careful like Johnny made the point there that Derry are, are better than or you've got to be careful snapshot in time over a season yeah, okay yeah. Derry have Derry aren't ready to win a league title yet I feel part of that is down to a lot of the injuries they've had obviously and I think it will take time for that that squad to be built from where they're coming from I think Rory's on the right path to do that right so I, I still think Rovers are in a really strong position of power and that's why they've got to now fix their squad If, if but ultimately that's for them to see I presume the staff can see what the problem is so well, this is a big debate that we've had in and around the Irish international team is a perfect example of it the, um, and, and around Sean McRovers it's about styles it doesn't you, I always compare and I've done it many times and this is a good time to bring it back up I compare the Dundalk team that I was, I was it with for 8-9 years to Liverpool and their style of play not, not direct re- replicate but Dane Massey uh, getting forward cross and over hit cross Sean Gallon scores at back post mm. Trent and um, uh, Robinson okay good example where this Rovers team are very much like say a Man City not easy not necessarily that they're not easy on the eye but it's it's build up build up pass 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 and that's okay and that that is good enough and you've got the players to win the league the problem is when you go to Europe playing that way or you're Ireland going to Europe uh, playing with a back three it's a little bit slow it's a little bit like you're waiting on something to switch off and when you go up levels people don't switch off as much so that that's the best way I can explain the sort of two different systems I'm a believer in as I said about Rory I'm a believer in go and score I remember uh, one of my first games in charge and, and John Gill was with me and it was the first time with the group and he said we were we were one nil up with two minutes to go. Oh, keep one to send a half back. And went, no, we'll get to second. Mm. Right now it was a corner, and he was right. And that's the all. And it, and I remember he. I'm, I'm saying it to me only recently. Learned a huge amount of that attacking play. And by the way, I learned that off Stephen Kenny. But say no, get the second. We'll win the game and instead of that sort of. I'm not saying Rovers have a defensive mindset. I'm just saying attacking play for me and bravery is something that's getting lost in the game a little bit all through the levels it's gone a little bit too slow a little bit too passive even domestically in our league some of the games are great it's brilliant to watch but you look at say a team like Bowles I'd rather watch a team like Bowles all day long than some other teams you look at 
Sligo third last second last being struggling but they're probably making more passes outside of Shamrock Rovers than anyone else yeah. so our game has gone passive a little bit I think across the world and I think the teams that play with speed and power in my view you've you've a better chance as much as Man City are there I'd love I'd love 20 of the best players in the world and play Man City's way and do what Pep does but if you're not going to have 20 of the best players in the world I believe the better way is go out and score more than the opposition and in fairness to Derry like because the, the, Vinny alludes to this in the first leg McGonigal started but they had Brandon Kavanagh Patching McElhenney Duffy McGonigal like a really attacking team Brian Maher has done really poorly for one of the goals they've coughed up three goals Higgins will not be happy with that and they've still managed to find a way by playing effectively attacking football and they, they if you watched that game yesterday it was playing in Finland but it was really really 50-50 type game that was swinging either way and I, I like their composure as well Vinny for you know Rory's not the job that long but like the, that experience like Duffy to get that goal um, for, you know I, I think that they, they, they never gave the impression that they didn't believe they could do it no, and, no. and their and, and th- their squad depth got them through this Shamrock Rovers definitely failed them this year they were just let down and they had no pace for key games goalkeeping issues um, so Stephen Bradley has a lot to reflect on at the moment but ironically now or and Alanis Morris said irony maybe Shamrock Rovers now can just focus on the league Derry could be playing four more games in Europe. They have a very good chance, 50-50 maybe chance, of getting through the next round. Yeah. Well, look, they were take. The, the problem you have is, and just just to sort of briefly go over, like particularly the good thing for Derry is, and, and in terms of even compared to, say, the results and the style of play, to bring people on the journey. So yeah. the Irish, Irish ladies team have brought a certain amount of people on the journey. I feel that a attack-minded coach would actually bring more now Okay, and that doesn't mean I think Vera Powell should lose a job. I'm just saying, you've got to take people on the journey. Okay, and I think that result yesterday will the, the amount of people around Derry now that will stand up and their attendance is, will, are huge anyway. But they really that will capture the man, imagination. Okay, but the other side of it is they're playing a team from Kazakhstan. So the easiest thing to, for the general public, Kazakhstan, sure. You know, you, they're probably the first thought of Kazakhstan is probably Borat. You know? is, yeah. So, but they've knocked out uh, FC made- Basel. So it's yeah. not like the people are just. It's like there's a side in the Faroe Islands now just qualified for a group stage. World football, European football is changing. The champions of Hungary, champions of um, Romania, all these sides are just now. Every every nation is doing what we're doing. UEFA have improved proved the coach education of teams and world football is improving uh, underneath the elite level where everyone is sort of grouped in around the same way so yeah. it's really difficult to, to progress in Europe at the same time it's uh, I'm sure if you, when you were talking to Rory last night uh, you'd rather be playing them than Basel uh, they're yeah, mid-table aren't they in Kazakhstan yeah the, the only challenge with going back to, to, to Kazakhstan is it's going to be a huge flight like yeah. it's going to be really really difficult and once you get to certain rounds your wife will expect you to charter a flight um, mm. and not expect you that's part of the rules within I don't think it's for the and uh, maybe the next round uh, so the expense is, is huge and different things there is a certain allowance for we've to travel over a certain time so it starts getting really expensive and it will affect their league position and um, there's no doubt about it because you're traveling for hours so in many ways Basel is easier because it's it's a, a couple of hour fly you'll know all about them so it's harder to do your homework but modern scouting now they'll be okay what about the um just say the Ireland job, right? The Vera Pouse have come back to it. If you, if just say Vinny Park, if there was an interview to that job and you went in, and you, what, what would you, how would you approach it in the sense of, this is women's football, right? Is there a difference in your head if you applied for a job, a different job, say in the League of Ireland or even an international job at underage level? Is there a difference in your head of how I approach myself in this interview here? Does that make sense? Because it's, it's slightly different. Yeah, I've only really done one interview since I've came out of football, as mm. much as. I got interviewed here a couple of weeks ago for the Cork job with the lads, <laughs> uh, and I never. I was going to say Liam Buckley, but that's even. Yeah, I never, I never applied for the <laughs> job, so I've only ever done done one interview uh, since I've come out of football. Um, I suppose, look, it's difficult to answer that, but um, I, look, wi- the women's football. I like, for example, I wouldn't apply for that job because I've no, exp- like, I couldn't do. It's, it's. I'm not saying it's a different game but it's slightly you need a certain skill set to coach in the women's game and you've got to understand it so but 
I think I think you've got to sell yourself and the dream and like I'm a tact minded coach so if I went to meet someone I'd be I'd be playing on the point of you know the odd time we might lose a game we might lose 2-0 3-0 I might mm. get done the odd time but I, I I'm a dreamer and I think I think there's nothing wrong with that in terms of I think any Irish side should be thinking about group stage European football now there is a mindset go oh just win the league every year that's grand I don't believe in that I think you should be aiming for group stage football um, that's if, why if I made it win the league then this year is that a successful season for them well, well, it is, and it is, and I think, I think within that club, I think that's really good, and and continue to build and build and build. You're allowed, you're allowed an off year. Remember, like, you know, people look back with rose tinted glasses of airtime at Dundalk, but in seven day in Cork, hammered us mm, out of the park. Mm. But people f- sort of forget that, and we got beaten in that year four or five nil in Europe. So look, you've got to sell, you've got to dream, you've got to believe, and in 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 sort of. I would, I would probably, I would probably only go back to a club. I think that I felt could would want to play European football. Right. Does Stephen Bradley prioritise the League of Ireland over Europe? I would say, I would say, no. Uh, it probably doesn't look that way because of how when you got to the group stage last year, you probably felt you need to secure the league again. I understand that mindset. Um, I work for a club who people thought people thought our American owners just wanted the money of Europe they didn't they've that much money it wasn't about that but they wanted to push the club as a European club and they felt that was more important than domestically mm. because you could fix the domestic stuff a lot easier where I get the sense where I always feel just qualify for Europe and we'll fix it next year or by winning the league the Champions route and we'll fix it next year so no I'd say uh, I, I, I'm trying to think of the right word here I'd say his own not his own ego because that's the I'd say he wants to be and his players want to be successful in Europe it's he's, a, he's a football and coach as well Bradley like, and I know from speaking to him down the years like he felt two years ago in general he felt Rovers hadn't achieved in Europe last year when they got to the group stages he made in hindsight a pragmatic call our squad depth is such here that we need to win the league and realistically in Europe we'll do extremely well to get out of the group so we'll we'll prioritise the league that was fine but this year was a rep, was a retrograde step because they, they had no young players coming through basically playing in Europe uh, of any kind consequence their squad was was either too old or too slow um, to compensate for players that couldn't play like Ferrugia and Clark and they, they took a major step backwards they scored one goal in Europe this season that was a VAR given penalty yeah. um, and as much as French Varos are very like you don't expect them to beat French Varos they shouldn't be in this situation so they've got a situation where they've taken a step back and now they are in a battle in the league they really are in a battle in the league uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how they respond but I think the four in a row is obviously something um, you know that to motivate them now, but this is a this is a challenging time. This is the most challenging time for Bradzer as a coach since um, Gavin Bazuna came in into goal because Rovers once Gavin Bazuna went into goal, Rovers had serious goalkeeping issues, right? Mm-hmm. Gavin Bazuna came in and then Rovers progressed and then started winning leagues. They've, this is the first time since really that he's been under proper, um, I suppose, internal scrutiny over where the squad has has gone because they're they're not playing well at all at the moment. Like Vinny was at the game last night, so I can't talk about that. But the the, the the kind of life has gone out of them a little bit at the moment and they can't score either yeah it's 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 a challenge for him but what I will say is there has to be enough credit in the bank to give him time to do that oh, 100%, he's, done a, yeah. he's done a remarkable job uh, for, for a young coach and he's in a really strong position and um like all the all the greats, whether it's League of Ireland terms, Kenny, whether it's Fenlon, whether it's going over to the UK, whether it's Fenger or Ferguson, have all had down years where mm. things and you've had to rebuild and set a squad up. It's just about it's just about what what they see internally, uh, Stephen and his staff to say. Do they see the same problems? Do they think it's just down to injuries of say Jack Bourne and Ferrugia? And, mm. and we're going to find out. But it's fascinating. There's only like. League of Ireland is so competitive now I think the top four is only five points between them at the moment so we have a title race I still stick by ten points because now coming out of Europe means um, but we're in a mad situation where someone like Pats were that poor in form that the co- coach lost, lost their job if they win tonight against Sligo they're only a point behind Shamrock Rovers mm-hmm. it's bizarre um, 
you're able to lose a lot of games in this league at the moment and still progress so it's really exciting times um, as I said it's great that one of the clubs is, is, is bashing away in Europe now that the GEA heads have gone away for a while we can grab some of the headlines and say hey we're here well, very briefly as well I, like as much as I want Irish teams to win in Europe Rovers getting another 3 million or whatever it is this year it wouldn't necessarily be great for the overall balance of power in the league so Rovers losing out on that money and Derry making money and Derry and Pat it's been quite close to Rovers in the league at the moment is probably better for the overall picture we don't want Rovers running away with it every year yeah, and Bowes hanging in there as well obviously yeah. uh, uh, with Drada tonight uh, just a quick word on Dundalk before we leave you Vinny obviously it, um, too much to do last night uh, we mentioned their their opponents there were 3-1 down going in 2-2 on the night and that's it they're out uh, Daryl Horgan was the thing I wanted to ask you about paraded before the the uh, crowd last night really warm reception for him and I wondered about what sort of version of coming he's home he's to Dock we're saying as well he's from Galway <laughs> no. he's literally ah, from Galway he's from Galway he's from a Galway family coming home he's got it done 30 year old Daryl Horgan coming back having done a bit of a trip around what sort of a version are they getting back oh look um, who knows but I tell you what like first of all his wife's from Dundalk his kids would would always do the summer camps in Dundalk and different things like that so he is coming home <laughs> despite what the Galway man says uh, I thought there was an outside chance if Galway had been in the Premier Division you wonder whether the Comer brothers might have went after Rory Galway. Gaffney Patrick Hoogan oh. bring them home but look um, uh, again I spoke to, I spoke to Daryl yesterday and uh, I said you know, you know what? Like I tell you, what they're getting, they're getting it's they're getting that Cluxton type character back into the dressing right. room. Okay, um, Daryl used to keep me out for hours back back when you know the strength and conditioning coach didn't worry about people's loads, and he he because he played off the left. I'd stand at the corner of the box. He'd roll the ball into me and bend on top corner. And like, I mean, he would, if it was snowing, he wouldn't stop until he, and then when he put one in top corner, he'd go, yeah, yeah, I want to do it twice. You know, it's just him. He's just a perfectionist. That's the family as well, I think, Vinny. Yeah. yeah they're a brilliant yeah. family. Like, and, right. and I think we've got, Duffy is, his, Duffy is one of my favourite players, right? Ever to coach. Daryl Horgan's one of my favourite players. Uh both same position both have that same thing we've got some real stars in the league people will be excited to see I hope I hope Horgs goes back because he's played in different positions and he's signed for clubs who play different shapes goes back and plays in that left wing position and tell you what when Derry played on dock you're looking at two absolute legends of left wingers and if you um, haven't seen the Duffy goal yesterday have a look at it like that the quality of the header and you're right behind it with the video and it's like for Michael Duffy who's had lots of injuries I thought that was just a beautiful moment and him and Horgan proper talents so We've got we've got another another star back in the league, someone who compete with Forrester, Tell, uh, Jack Bourne, Michael Duffy, Patrick McElhenney, and the more than we get, him, he's, yeah, mm. yeah. And as I said, he's that Cluxton type figure who's going to come in and and set the standards in training. And O'Donnell will be absolutely buzzing another Galway man to have uh, Daryl back in there. So exciting times for Dundalk. They're probably a little bit short from from a squad squad point of view, but signing Daryl will will certainly help them. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. Finney, thanks, Millie, for coming in. Thank you. Fair play as always.